Hi, welcome back to Joe Blogs. This video is the next in a series looking at the financial implications of Russia's invasion of Ukraine on the global economy. And in today's episode, I'd like to talk about education and specifically Russian university education and what the impact of the ongoing war is on both university entrants, current graduates who are studying at university and the professors who are teaching in universities. And I'll share with you a short interview with a former professor from St. Petersburg University who was arrested as part of the protests against the mobilization effort and has now lost his job. And he's talking about the major crisis that's going on right now in education in Russia. And I'll go on to talk about how important university education is in terms of business. We'll have a look at what percentage of the current chief executives all around the world have your university education and why this is really critical right now for Russia because of all of the sanctions that are in place. Russia needs to be more self-sufficient. It needs to create more of its own opportunities over the next three to five years because it's not going to be able to access the research and development that's coming out from the West. And that's what's been happening over the last 30 years. Russia has been able to benefit by sharing knowledge, information, products and licenses. But in the immediate future, that's not possible for Russia. And so it now needs its own people to be developing their own products. And problems in higher education are not going to help that cause. But in terms of the economic impact, there's also a big factor because people who are higher educated earn more and therefore they contribute more to society in terms of spending the multiplier effect of their incomes but also they pay more taxes and your brighter people help you to become more competitive on a global perspective. So we'll have a look at all of these factors and then finally today I'll wrap up with my summary as to what I think the impact of what's going on right now in Russian education will have on Russia and its economy over the course of the next three to five years. So before we get into all of that, if I could ask you to give me a thumbs up at some point during this video, if you're enjoying the content, please subscribe if you haven't done so already. Don't forget, I always include chapters. So if you don't have time to watch the whole thing, you can pick and choose what you'd like to see. And if you'd like to support the channel, please have a look below where you'll find links to Buy Me A Coffee, Patreon, YouTube, Super Thanks and Membership and Amazon Shopping Links. Since the start of the war in Ukraine on the 24th of February, we have seen two major surges in people leaving the country. In the initial few weeks after the invasion started, there was a huge brain drain. It was estimated that around 500,000 people left the country as a direct result of the military action. And these people were highly educated. So people who had university degrees, masters, doctorates, all of those sort of people. People who had really senior jobs. So senior management of companies, either companies who were multinationals, so had operations in Russia, who decided that they wanted to close down all of their facilities, or senior management in Russian businesses who decided that they didn't agree with the politics and that they would rather go abroad and find new jobs and relocate. So we saw the first wave of the brain drain taking place at the early stages of the war. On the 21st of September, President Putin announced on live TV that he was calling the first mobilization since World War II and that another 300,000 men were needed to go and support the fight in Ukraine. Now, the immediate response of this was twofold. Firstly, there was a wave of protests held all across Russia, and those protests were dealt with brutally by the authorities. Russian police came in, physically manhandled a lot of the protesters, and they were taken away in vans, and it was reported that a number of those who were arrested were subsequently conscripted and forced to go and join the fight in Ukraine. As a result of these actions, the protests quickly died down and we saw a mass break for the border. Around 700,000 people were estimated to have left the country within the first two weeks after the call of the mobilization. And many of those 700,000 people were highly educated people who no longer wanted to stay in Russia. So it's now estimated that a total of 1.2 million people have left Russia as a direct result of the invasion and a high percentage of these are highly educated university graduates. Now, as I mentioned in the introduction, university education is really important to the development of an economy. You need your brightest people to take themselves to another level, to specialize, to develop their knowledge and their skills in order for your industry and businesses to be at the cutting edge. And a former St. Petersburg University lecturer is now claiming that science is dead in Russia and that the brain drain is killing Russian education. Until recently, Dennis Scopin was an associate professor at the Faculty of Liberal Arts and Sciences 
at St. Petersburg State University, Russia. Following the announcement of the mobilization on the 21st of September, Professor Skopin joined students in an anti-war protest and was subsequently arrested and jailed for 10 days. And during this 10-day period, Professor Skopin claimed that the authorities applied pressure on him to sign up and join the military offensive. He was subsequently fired from his position on the 26th of October and his dismissal order from the university stated, the act committed by the employee is immoral and incompatible with the implementation of educational functions and the continuation of this work. In response to this, Scopin stated in a recent interview, a university is a place where people should think, where qualities such as critical thinking and independent thought should be encouraged. Unfortunately, this is no longer possible in today's Russia. Everything happening now in Russian universities will lead to, if not the complete destruction of the educational system in the country, then to a deep crisis. So clearly Professor Skopin is unhappy, and let's have a look at a short extract of an interview that he gave recently, talking about the Russian education system. Russia is losing the best people now. The most educated, uh, the most energetic, the most critically thinking people are leaving the country. Russian science is dead after the 24th of February. And a country without science has no future. I think what's going on right now in the Russian education system is really interesting. Because if you look back in history, a lot of change that's happened in many countries around the world is often started by students. Students come out and demonstrate. They are generally the more educated and the more politically motivated members of society to come out and ask for change. And we've seen this time and time again in many countries around the world. And the response to these calls for action are always very interesting. And what we've seen in Russia right now is that the students initially came out and protested both at the start of the war and also after the mobilization call in September. And those protests were stamped out very quickly by the authorities. Students were arrested and in the most recent set of circumstances it's been claimed that a lot of students were forced to go and fight in Ukraine. Now that's going to be a massive disincentive for any other students to protest because if you run the risk of being conscripted sent directly to Ukraine potentially you may never come back. That could be a death sentence for you. So this is really quite extreme in terms of the way the authorities have handled things. And the fact that Professor Skopin, who we saw in the video, has been sacked from his job is showing that there is a zero tolerance process in place here. The universities are not coming out and rebelling against the war. They're being told to get into line and get with the program. And the knock-on impact of that is that we will see a mass exodus. We've already seen two waves of brain drain, but it's likely that people who want to study in Russia are unlikely to stay in Russia. They will need to go overseas. And we may well see lots more professors and university educated people deciding that this isn't the place to be. And what we're going to do in the rest of this video is look at how important university education is to the success of an economy. This chart shows the average monthly wage paid to employees in Russia by level of education. Now, unfortunately, the most recent statistics that have been released are for October 2021, but the trend is still the same. And you can see on the left hand side here, the average pay paid to people who have a university degree or higher is 75,000 rubles. And at that time, that compared to an average salary of around 48,000 rubles for the general population. So that means that graduates on the whole are earning more than 50% more than the average salary. So that's obviously great if you're a graduate, but in terms of the impact on the economy, what that means is that when those people earn more, if they're earning 50% more, then generally speaking, they will be spending 50% more because they will be spending what they're earning, and that has a multiplier effect on the economy. So I've talked about this in previous videos. I've referred to it as a ripple effect, the knock-on impact, the multiplier effect, whatever you want to call it. But if you earn money and you spend it at a restaurant, that restaurant obviously takes your money, they make some profit, and then they pay all of their employees. And those employees then go out and spend money in other restaurants and other stores, and then so it goes on. So the basic benefit that you have of having more graduates in your economy is that they're earning more, they're spending more, and your economy will grow at a faster rate. But there's also an educational benefit because if those people are higher educated, they're brighter, they're sharper, then hopefully that means that they're more productive. They're coming up with more ideas, more ways of developing concepts, 
increasing marketing, all of those sort of things. So you want to nurture and develop all of that talent to get the best out of those people, which means that the companies that they're working for will be growing faster. And overall, the more educated people that you have in your society who are working in all of those companies, it should result in faster growth and more development. Now, in terms of looking at how important a university degree is to senior management of companies, I thought it was worth looking at the educational breakdown of chief executives around the world. And a chief executive is generally the top guy in any company. So that's somebody who's in charge, the number one person. So somebody like Elon Musk, Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, those sort of guys. And this table shows the academic backgrounds of the world's top CEOs that's been put together by study.eu. And it shows that 74% of all chief executives in Europe have at least a master's degree, 73% in Latin America, 64% in Asia, 62% in North America, 59% in Australia, and 50% in Africa. So these statistics are fairly compelling. But the reason that these people are chief executive of their companies isn't because they've got a degree. It's not just because of what's on their CV. It's actually because they're smart people. They are doing things that are helping those companies grow and develop. So a degree is a good way of proving that you're intelligent, but actually putting all of your knowledge and experience into practice is the most important factor here. And that's the key issue that we're talking about. If the Russian university system is now starting to be controlled more by the state, and the authorities are telling students to stop protesting, to stop having freedom of thought, freedom of speech, then that's going to restrict the development of all of those students. And people who are the real thinkers, the guys who can think outside of the box, who are thinking about how to do things differently, won't want to stay in that environment. They're more likely to leave the country and go and study elsewhere. And if they're going overseas because they don't agree with the political regime and what's happening in Russia right now, they're very unlikely to go back. So let's have a look at the recent trends in the number of students enrolling at university in Russia. This graph shows the total number of students enrolled in higher education institutions in Russia. And what this shows is that since 2014, which coincidentally was when Russia invaded Crimea and annexed all of that area from Ukraine, and sanctions were actually applied against the country at that point, there has been an annual reduction in the number of students every single year. So back in 2014, Russia had 5.2 million students enrolled in total. That figure fell to 4.8 in 2015, 4.4 in 2016, 4.3 in 2017, 4.2 in 2018, 4.1 in 2019, and 4 million in 2020. So those figures are obviously concerning, but when you look at the breakdown of what the students were actually studying, the number of students who are studying a specialism, such as medicine or technology, has reduced significantly. So back in 2014, the black section of this graph shows that almost 1.5 million students were focused on some form of vocational specialism. So this is an area of expertise that Russia needs to help grow and develop its economy. And you can see that over the past seven years, the number of students enrolling for specialisms has reduced significantly. And in 2021, that figure was closer to half a million. And a reduction in the number of students focusing on specialisms is a major problem for Russia right now because of the sanctions that are being applied against the country. In the past, Russia was able to benefit from research and development that was being done all across the world. They could share in that knowledge. Going forward, Russia won't have the ability to be able to do that, so it needs to develop its own specialisms. And having a reducing amount of students who are focused in on all of these specialist areas is going to represent a major problem for them. So there's two main takeaways here. Firstly, we've seen a massive reduction in total student numbers, more than 20% over the last seven years. But we're also seeing a reduction in the specialist areas that students are focusing in on. And this is at a time when Russia needs those specialists. They need to develop their own cutting edge technology and research to be able to compete globally. One of the biggest problems that Russia is facing right now is technology. Because of the sanctions that have been applied as a direct result of the war, Russia no longer has access to any technology from the West. 
And that is a major problem because in technology, you need specialists who are focusing in on certain areas, developing their research and development, building on that year-on-year -year knowledge that they've had over a long period of time. And there are specialist hubs in a number of areas across the globe. We've got Silicon Valley, we've got Taiwan, we've got South Korea, we've got Oxford in the UK. There are a multitude of places who are specialists who are developing things that nobody else can come up with. And over the past 30 years or so, Russia has benefited both from joint ventures, so it's developed a lot of its oil and gas technology with companies like Shell, BP, ExxonMobil, and they bring with them their own research and development, their own knowledge, and their own technology. But as a result of the sanctions, all of that has been wiped out, so Russia can't use those joint ventures anymore. And it won't be able to license their technology directly, because the companies that own the intellectual property for that technology simply won't allow Russia to have any access to it. Now, you may be thinking, well, that's not a problem because China produced copies of all of the technology. They can just reproduce everything and let Russia have it on a backdoor black market basis. But that absolutely won't be happening because a lot of the microchips that are produced that are really important for all products, this isn't just high technology oil and gas industry, this is every product in the world, is now developing some sort of smart function. So it needs chips to be able to get it to do that. The American companies, the UK companies, the international companies who are sanctioning Russia will not allow China to use that technology and sell it onto Russia. If they do that, then China would be exposed to secondary sanctions. And as we've seen on a number of occasions over the past six months or so, Indian and Chinese companies don't want to run the risk of those secondary sanctions. They do most of their international trade with the West. A lot of exports go from India and China to Western countries. And the last thing that they want to do is shoot themselves in the foot by selling things to Russia and losing most of their business. So this is a major problem for Russia. And as a result, it needs to develop its own research and development and to produce its own technology. And this is something that Russia has been focused on for the past eight years or so. Since the invasion of Crimea, it's lost access to a variety of technology mostly based on military products because the West didn't want Russia continuing to expand its military capability. Now, as a direct result of that, President Putin instructed Russia to develop its own technology to produce its own microchips. But unfortunately, that hasn't happened. It's very difficult to be able to do that. You can't just fast track technological development. It takes a long period of time. You need the expertise. So that's why everybody shares everybody else's technology because you haven't got time to do it yourself. Unfortunately for Russia, they're going to have to do that. And what we've heard from the Russian authorities is that it's likely that Russian technology will go backwards over the next five years. So because of these circumstances, now is absolutely the right time for Russia to be putting a lot of energy and investment into its university structure, trying to get lots of students to come through with new ideas, breakthroughs, technology, so that the country can benefit from all of those new ideas and keep up with the rest of the world. But unfortunately, what we're seeing is the opposite. We're seeing universities being put under pressure. The authorities are clamping down on students, and it's likely that the brain drain will continue and that the university structure in Russia will actually go backwards in the same way as technology is in the country. So what's the summary and conclusion today? Well, I wanted to post this video because education and universities and graduates are really important to the long-term success of all economies. Your brightest people tend to go to university. That's where they learn and develop. And then they come out into the working environment. They build up their skills and their knowledge. And university graduates generally go on to earn more than people who are lower educated and they are generally taking more positions in senior management. We saw in the data earlier that round about two thirds of all chief executives all around the world have a university degree. And it's likely going forward that those percentages will increase. So graduates are important to an economy for two reasons. Firstly, they earn more. Therefore, they're contributing faster back to society. Most companies have some form of fast track employment process whereby graduates are paid more. They go through rapid training programs and therefore they move through to senior management quicker. So from an economic point of view, they contribute to the economy quicker, but they also contribute from a managerial and a development perspective. So they're important to the ongoing success of those companies. And from Russia, perspective right now, they need their own talent. They need to develop in-house talent 
because nobody wants to go to Russia. A lot of people who were working there prior to the war have left, so they've lost a lot of that overseas knowledge and expertise. So they need to bring their own through. And the best way to do that will be to bring people through universities, give them some form of specialist training and education, and then to get those people into Russian industry and to get them to the top and to try to develop Russian businesses as fast as possible. But what we're seeing right now is actually the opposite. Russia is clamping down on universities. It's arresting students who are protesting. It's actually potentially even sending some of them to Ukraine to fight. So that's really causing a lot of concern amongst students. As we saw earlier in the video, professors are actually being sacked from their position. They're being fired if they're seen as being anti-war. So this is really starting to close down on freedom of speech and people's freedom of thought. So that is really anti everything that students are all about. And what we're going to see over the next few years is a reduction in the amount of people in higher education in Russia. And that's going to have a devastating impact long term on the Russian economy. Because if it can't get all of those people coming through who've got the knowledge and expertise and the brain power to be able to help develop all of the Russian businesses, then they are going to go even further backwards. And as I mentioned earlier in the video, one of the major problems for Russia right now is their lack of access to technology. So they really need to be fast forwarding their programs, developing their own technology, trying to get back to competing with the rest of the world. And if they're causing all of their students and their education system to actually exit and close down, then that's going to have a further detrimental impact on both Russia's education system and its economy. So all of this is really disastrous news from Russia's perspective. So I think what's seen from today's video is that there is now a major long-term impact on Russia's economy because the brain drain is causing the best people in Russia to leave. And if more students now decide that they no longer want to continue with their education and they're leaving, then that means that going forward, there's going to be less talent coming through into the Russian workforce. And that's going to put them even further backwards. And as we discussed in a previous video on mobilization, Russia already has a demographic problem right now because they had a reduction in their birth rate and a major increase in their death rate towards the end of the 90s. They've actually got less people in the 15 to 30 year age bracket coming through. So there's already a problem with regards to the sheer number of people. But if then you've got all of those people deciding they don't want to stay in Russia, they don't want to go in education, then that's going to cause them even further problems in the future. So I'll keep you posted on any further news and developments as and when they happen. Hopefully you found today's video useful, informative and thought provoking. If you've liked what I've said, please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already.